I'm a ride on the rings of Saturn. I'm a break it down on the beat. Bird diet, you know what I'm saying? I want a bird diet. <laughs> Tell me more about your bird diet, Russell. Um, I eat bread. <laughs> I eat bread too. Yeah. I, I hear bread is bad for you though. Yeah, I'm on they call it the uh Ab Ab Atkins diet. <laughs> no carbs with a trademark <laughs> next to it. Ab Atkins. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the media music section of the B3 podcast. I'm Nick Strauss, your host, and today I'm here with Rasul, the nobody elder. How you doing? Oh, I'm loving life, brother. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing really great. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I was hoping today we could talk a little bit about your life as an artist and an entrepreneur and what it means to combine those two worlds to be successful. Um, yeah, man, let's do it. Word. So where are you right now? Would you say you got a new album coming out, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on, um, a, a new record. Um, actually I got two, two new records in the works. One of them I don't have a name for. It's, um, it's uh really, really super conscious though. It's got like a really cool message to it. Overall, it's um Conscious hip hop, you mean? Yeah, I'm trying to activate some things with it, you know what I'm saying? I'm really speaking to those who are um trying to move in that uh uh galactivated uh movement. So with that record. And then I got another record, um, that um is kinda more fleshed out right now. It's a little more finished. Um it's not complete, but it is a little more finished than the other one. And um, I do have a title for it, but it's a working title, so I won't use it right now. And just, oh, come on, you can't just tease us like that. Um, <laughs> I, I will say, I will say this: um, since I'm teasing you, I, I'm, I'm not going to um, back out and show y'all my cards yet. But I will tell you this: it is got a um, a Pee Wee Herman theme to it. Oh shit! And um, I'm not going to Pee Wee. I'm bringing Pee Wee to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a bar right there. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not. So I'm not going to Pee Wee's Playhouse. I'm bringing Pee Wee to the hood. What is rap to you? Is it like, is it a medium of expression? Is it a culture? Is it all of the above? Can you tell me what it means to you? Um, rap to me means what it means in the definition in general to me. And what that is, is almost like what you said. But not exactly. Um, hip hop means expression. Like I like to look at the word hip hop like the word art. The word art means expression. So hip hop means urban expression. So it's kind of like a subculture of expression. And so within art, you have like many things, right? You have music, you have dance, you have clothing, you have um, food, right? And so within hip hop, it's the same way, right? You have uh, music, you have dance, you have clothing, you have food. And so um the musical one of the musical aspects of hip hop is um rapping Rap. and so it doesn't matter if you're positive if you're negative if you rap slow if you rap fast if you got bars if you don't got bars you're a rapper all right and i love rappers i don't care if they fit into any of those categories if they if i enjoy their song i don't shy away from the opportunity to enjoy that song who who inspired you when you were younger and led you on the path of understanding that you just expressed to me? Or another way to ask that was, did you have a teacher, you know, within that world that, that has allowed you to come into your own? Or is it something that's exclusively through experience? Um, mostly the second part, but, um, my dad was a rapper and of course, um, but yeah, that, that helps through him. He, you know, I was around like Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature, Brand Nubians, Just Ice, King's Son, a lot of legends in, in the hip hop game coming up on the East coast. Um, a lot of y'all, if you know, or you don't know, I grew up in uh, Jersey city, um, in the eighties. So I, I was exposed to a lot of early hip hop, um, the genesis, like the proto-genesis of what became the phenomena we have now, correct? Yeah, I grew up around that. And so and so, I could say my dad, but also I grew up around that. So that's experience. 
in and of itself. And so um, I was influenced by hip hop itself. When when you talk about hip hop coming from someone who literally saw the birth and the growth, uh, is it something different to you than you think the average even hip hop head today? You know, like I'm, I'm this question of uh, like what is hip hop beyond just a genre of music uh, is something that I question a lot because I think it's extremely relevant, especially in American culture today and urban culture today. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, um, I'm sure that what you're saying like made sense, but I was like daydreaming about something. And, see, that says all I need to know right there. And then I, if I, <laughs> it was really dense, like it was pretty cool what I was thinking about. But then I kind of forgot that, and then I got into this like worry to like listen to what you were saying, and then try to figure out how I was gonna like know what the hell you were saying. So that, that let me way just I could let me rephrase it. Answer it. What what is going on with hip hop? What is it? Oh, nothing's going on with hip hop. I love hip hop in this current state. In fact, I think right now is one of the most exciting times in hip hop. If if you ask me, I mean, you could you could or or better said, you could ask that same question last year, the year before that, the year before that, and forty years. But on, and on is that. is that hip hop? The fact that it's constantly growing. Yeah. So that. That's that essence, that that liveliness to it, and hip hop, pe- hip hop is like, is in a lot of ways like um, Eric Satie was, in general to classical music in the late eighteen hundreds, right? Eric Satie came to the game, and he switched it up, and he didn't do it like everybody else, and it was like, what the heck is this young guy doing? You know, bringing this uh, Salvador Dalian style before even Salvador Dali was born, to uh, an art form that already had already stapled itself about what the establishment was going to accept and what it wasn't. And he pushed those, those, that bar, and he set it apart himself and made a lane for himself. And, and um, each artist sh- has the right to do that. It's, a, it's almost like inalienable rights as a human. It, it almost fits into your artistry. And I mean, I mean let's take skills... Um, and not set those aside. Yeah, have skills. So if you're playing a guitar, know how to play the guitar. Know, know your notes. Know if you're in tune. Know that stuff. And know how to play your chords properly. But after that, man, like, no one can tell you how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you get it in how you fit it in. You know what I'm saying? It's um, your expression, right? Yeah. And so, like, if, if you fall into the classical um, movement like Eric Satie happened to, um, you could happen to be an awkward individual within that scene and still hold your own and create a market for yourself and sustain yourself within that market is hip-hop a business no but you can use hip-hop as a business i mean you eat bagels is bagels a business (laughs) some people some people's businesses is a bagel some people bagel is a bagel you know what i'm saying like so what is hip-hop to you like i mean hip-hop is hip-hop so hip-hop is is a culture it's it's a culture like if you want to know what hip-hop is for real hip-hop is the culture of the original people of this land of america you know what i'm saying not the aborigine but or well, you might refer to us as the black man or some people call us african-american but i call us the original man and not the original man of africa the original american man you know what i'm saying so that that's that's our culture. It's it's a one way to express, or really the most predominant way to express our culture. And to be honest, hip hop is also one of the biggest exports, or the biggest export, um, from the United States of America of any goods that we distribute. Hip hop is the biggest goods that's distributed from America. So we are American culture. Um, so we are the original American culture. Um, and it's us, um, the melanated culture. Um, it's our culture, and so. It's our language, it's our dress, it's our style, it's uh, the original um, American man's culture. How does poetry fit in with your craft? Because um, you you have won numerous competitions, have you not? Yeah, I've done pretty well on, on some poetry stages from, from time to time. I've been known to participate in the National Poetry Slam and other um, pretty um, big events. Yeah, what happened? Uh at the National Poetry Slam? Um, 
Well, 2008, we definitely came came home with a victory um, for Group Peace Finals, um, and that was um, pretty uh, substantial uh, in that community. I was with a team called uh, Slam the Waddle, um, including a brother of mine, uh, Chances Are Good, um, Chris Johnson, and uh, um, uh, uh, Daniel Custodio. That's crazy you mentioned Chances Are Good because people in the scene in Asheville have shown me Chances Are Good independently, and I thought his conscious rap was extremely well-made and extremely accessible and very fun to listen to. Uh, that's awesome that you got to work with him. Um, when you're working in a group setting for something like poetry, slam, is that is it competitive? Is it like... Well, yeah. It's, if you, if I tell you this, I'm pretty much like, listen... We got eight months to get ready to compete against the top people in the world, and I want to win. So if you dicking around, then I'm gonna, you know, then you're gonna have a hard time with me anyway, because I'm not going to lose. Now the day of, like the day we show up out of the airplane and we show up to wherever nationals is, and I'm I've settled in to whether I not think we have a chance or not, and I'm okay with that. So if I'm like, we're going to do all right, then my goal is to do all right and then hurry up and lose so that I want to hurry up and lose so that we can go ahead and have a good time. Because I got 5,000 of the best poets in the world all in the same city, all in the same hotel tonight. So if I'm going to lose, I want to get go ahead, get my best done and lose so I can have a good time and get, get it over with and I'm not going to pout about it. Or cheap ass microphone. Hold on. Or if I have the the uh, if I have a uh, a good chance of winning, then I'm gonna go for the gusto and try to win. I'm gonna hold everybody to their guns. I'm gonna make them responsible for uh, being to the venue on time and being sharp on their lines. Regardless, I'm going to hold people to that so that they put a good show on for the people. I mean, a lot of people don't understand what Poetry Slam is about. I mean, I'm a competitive person, but Poetry Slam and competition within the Poetry Slam isn't really about who is the best poet in the building. It's really about giving people a great show. I mean, people used to show up to poetry events in the 80s with, like, 70-page papers and, like, read monotone in the library in one of the most boring settings ever. Just don't touch anything because it keeps changing the dynamics. Just work with it. It's, like, slowly, like... (laughs) Yeah, just, just work with it. But... But um, people would go to libraries and stuff and, and read, like, for 45 minutes, and it would be, like, lines of people to come bore each other to death, and no one was listening to each other, and they were just reading to hear themselves read. And someone was like, this sucks. How do you make people, like, stop doing this? And so it's like, all right, you got three minutes. All right, we're going to judge you, and we're going to pick random people, and they get to say whatever the hell they want, one to ten. And then you get to hear what people think about your goddamn lecture, and you get cut off by time, and if you go too long, they kick you off. And it happened to create a dynamic that was fun for the audience. And so although you want to win, like which I do want to win, um, you've got to remember that the real, the real show is for the people, and it's really just a show for, for the people. So Poetry Slam brought poetry... To the people is what you said. It saying. made it accessible and it brought it to the mainstream. My last National Poetry Slam that I attended was in 2011, and that was the first year that it sold out a actual like three three thousand seat theater. The National Poetry Slam. It was the the the, the tickets were wrapped around the building. People were scalping tickets for. Was it your life as a rapper, an artist, that brought you to the Poetry Slam, or vice versa? Um, that's another thing the Leaf Festival did, man. Oh, interesting. Um, it was, I was that same year I, I was telling you about earlier, we had a, a conversation on that previous to this recording where I was telling him about a, uh, the Leaf Festival that's here in that, uh, Asheville inspiring me with another venture in my life. That same trip, um, I, um, I went to the Leaf Slam and, um, I didn't know this unbeknownst to me. Um, I, I just went there with my girlfriend, and um, unbeknownst to me, you get a free entry into the Poetry Slam with a ticket. So anyone who had a ticket could get into the Slam. And I was a rapper, and I, I had seen that movie Slam, and uh, I, I wasn't, you know, into the whole cliche 
aspect of it. I didn't know much about slam, but I saw this slam and I signed up for it because I could do acapella raps and I just signed up to do it. And I wanted to place in fifth place in the slam and I had a great time. They did workshops and stuff. It was pretty cool. And all the people I met throughout the slam happened to be the slam community because like I was saying, unbeknownst to me, this slam was like the slam that the national community at the time used as their practice ground, at least in this region, for nationals. Well, the next year I um, placed for my team in Virginia at the time, and I was actually the first rookie to go to the National Poetry Slam for Virginia. For Virginia. And so my whole team was rookies, and I was the grand champion from the, from the team, which means I was the highest ranking poet in the state. And I, we went, it was in Austin, Texas, we went down there, and I knew everyone already. <laughs> And everyone was trying to figure out, how, how does Russell know everybody? <laughs> and it was because of uh, the Leaf Festival. Um, and I didn't know how to do slam poetry back then. I was doing raps. And I, I placed fifth at the Leaf. And we did we did terribly at, at Nationals, which is, I, I, there's, a, there's a lesson in that because um, not only did we do terribly at Nationals, um, our first Nationals, but I personally um, had a fallout with the whole team and, I made friends with some guys from Boston, and, and they really, like, listened me up. And the the slam community was a really cool thing to be around. It was something that I researched and really wanted to be around, and it was, that was cool, too. But my experience was really lackluster due to everything happening around sucking and then the experience sucking with my team. Um, but when I got back, I, I realized no one knew that, and they only knew me as the first poet to go to the National Poetry Slam from Virginia. So, yeah, so that worked out. So I just said that over and over and over and over again. It opened so many doors for me. And it, so I so my I guess my lesson to you guys is is like it doesn't matter how you feel about something, especially if it sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um the poetry slam was one of many stops on your career. Uh some notable other stuff you've done uh, has to do with ingredients magazine and festival uh correct yeah um now that was all independent richmond virginia uh artist exposure uh that was all that was bringing together everything correct yeah it was really all about like poetry um that was prior to me ever going to the National Poetry Slam actually okay so that was before actually yeah i i hadn't even been th- when i did ingredients i I, I didn't even, I, I hadn't even been, it was like t- probably two years before I slammed. Um, wow. But it was probably after I went to the Leaf Slam. So it was, you know, that, that little piece of that was inspired by the Leaf Slam or what I knew about Slam, which wasn't much. You know what I mean? Like, even my, th- there were some people who showed up to the Ingredient Slam who were like, you're, not, you're, doing, you're doing this part wrong. <laughs> and they, they traveled from really far to come and um i fixed it I, you know i didn't know could you explain to the listeners exactly how you put together ingredients and what that meant for everyone involved and uh your your method as a coordinator and a manager slash executive because that's something a lot of artists they got the art but then they want to know what's good with promoting it and your story is incredible. I would. I was uh, hoping you could explain to the listeners what you've done. Well, you know, <laughs> spill the beans, Russell. <laughs> that uh, the the way I, I, I the way that I made it a success, I gave away five thousand um, dollars to the community, um, and I didn't invest more than three hundred dollars. In about a year of my time. Um, but how how I cooked that up, how I took $300, put it in a pot, stirred it up, and turned it into a, the community having a great time um, and everybody getting a little way to show their talent and, and also break bread from it. Um, that might be proprietary information that I may have share it with you i'm hoping i know you can't give away the golden goose per se but i was hoping you could give a general outline so the artists out there have an understanding of how the game is actually played maybe don't don't explain your game plan but explain the game 
But I, I will say this. Um, never wait on other people. If you don't take your action into your hands and control every aspect of things that doesn't mean you're doing everything but you're controlling all the aspects of things or who makes the final decision of things then um you're putting yourself in your way never go and try to find a boss you don't need a partner you don't need um people to agree with you if you see that your idea is going to work and no one else does but you see your way to the other side of the tunnel go on through it if you see your way on to the other side of the tunnel um, now, if you're one of those people who don't have those vision, you probably haven't even got the, this far. But if you understand what I'm talking about and you can see what you're saying and you see other people don't, then I will say that in the beginning, I, I went to all the people I thought would be perfect for the festival to help me be, like do it. And I, at first, I wanted to, to the community to all, you know, participate in the developing of the festival. And they all told me it was a terrible idea. And all those people were buying tickets. You know, a really, really wise person once told me, Nick, if you have ideas, do not tell people your plans. Well, there's two reasons why. Obviously, there's one proprietary reasons. And the other, the other reason is because you actually, did you know that psychologically, you actually, by saying your idea, you satisfy the part of your that self receptors, yeah, yeah. that actually get satisfied from doing it so you don't have to actually do it to get that release and so when you actually say you know what i'm going to do it's it makes you just as happy as doing it russell could you do me one favor and just give a final piece of advice for the artists out there who might be listening to this podcast um well, it depends on what type of artist you are and what your goal is. Um, so first, determine what your goal is. Um, one of the most important things I would also say to any artists that are listening, and I would encourage that they say to any artists that listen to their influence, is that when you perceive the idea of what made it is or if you say i cannot wait until i make it or when i make it or i'm gonna make it or they don't believe i'm gonna make it or you keep talking about making it it's very important to analyze and ask yourself what making it means because this could be something that could be defined by many ways by many people me personally i don't believe in the concept of making it but that is my personal view. Now, if you believe that making it means something, then you need to write down what that means to you. Okay, if it's a list of seven things, it's a, if it's a list of four things, because if you're living in the arbitrary manner of what you think mean, make it means, then what you're asking for is a 360 deal, okay? And you're also asking to be a slave. What that means is if you don't know how you get the money, that means somebody else does. That means they're going to give you some of it, okay? And you're going to shut up. Thank you very much, Rasul. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you. We're going to follow this interview up with some tracks recorded right here in the studio. Yeah, all this stuff right here is all freestyle, man. So if you, you know what I'm saying, if you don't believe me, Nick was right there when I did it, man. Some of it I got video of, man. If you don't believe me, then listen to how many times I say word is bond. You're not going to believe it because of how good it is. But trust me, my word is bond. This is the podcast in which I'm hosting and, it. And I say and I, that shit was freestyle. And I said when I'm coming a lot, too, which I'm sorry for that. I, I forgive you. I hope the listeners will, too. But it's in context. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. We're going to get you guys some tunes coming right up. Hey, yo, big shout out to everybody out there, man. Y'all, thank y'all for listening. Yo, nobody in the building, man. Big shout out to my man, Nick. Big shout out to UNC, Asheville, man. I want to give a big shout out to all my homies in the AVL, man. Two up, two down, O-H-I-O, and your mama. Peace. Yeah, nobody, AVL, DW, aha, yeah, my man Nick, in the go, let's go, AVL, two up, two down, ha.
When you look at something, when you look at something you and you think you're really looking at it, really looking at it, well, well, it may not be what you're actually looking at. Down, like that's what we call, that's what we call an illusion. Break it down, but to break it down, AVL, break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. Big something, big something, head it up. Let's go, pyramid to the top. I'ma ride on the rings of Saturn. I'ma break it down on the beat. I'ma ride this every pattern. I'm not no robot, nah, they cannot stop me. I'm gon' time travel every time I'ma steal that javelin. People know I'm not no African, yeah. Originally, not no ABBA when I come through Stabba G. People can't get with me when I'm rapping through my apogee, my apogee. Energy, ain't no one on the class as me. My class will be actually surpassing all. I love these rack and see sometime. Sometimes I'm around my shine. Sometimes I'm around my flex. Sometimes, sometimes the KRK gon' flex up next. Sometime I go. Sometimes them shows expose your bones. I ain't written nothing down, y'all see. Rasul come through, I'm the best MC, y'all see, y'all swing that. Rasul come through, I'ma bang that. Rasul rip this with the syntax. I'ma rip on my rhyme with a pin that. Motherfucker, I don't even befriend that. Nah, catch me on Facebook flexing. When I come through, no question. Everything going to destination. If I come through, Rasul gonna be staying on that station. Yo, rotation, play me, play me with your crazy drop this, drop this, name dropping, gob sip. Huh, where this bone when you got lit now? Huh, listen to this sound. All the bullshit can kick down this frown. Rasul coming through, when I come through it's a luxury to be next to huh. Seeking for rest fruit, refuge, make it like a baby from a test tube Test tube, don't test soon, the next dude are gonna get flexed too Yeah, got my man Nick in this, ridiculous shit I spit Woo. Yeah, you ain't seeing this, uh, you understand how we in this Never stop man, ain't no secret, no secret, no secret Can't stop, can't stop, no secret, no secret, no secret Can't stop, I ain't right this, you can ask Nick He is standing right here while I blast this yeah, coming through, it's a classic Woo. What we teach in the class, now you know Now you know I'm a pro, now you know You and C, now you know I'm a G Everybody gonna find out free Freestyle and let me go I'ma do it from the top one more They gonna see how I go, never stop I'ma keep it out of space, out of space, out of space Will I rock it?